Test, test, okay, it's working. So welcome to our presentation about We Are Dungeon. Today we're going to explain how we made our We Are Game, We Are Dungeon. Uh, but first I introduce myself, I'm Jeremiah Bauer, I come from Switzerland and I'm 15 years old. Uh, yeah. And I'm John Borsau, I'm from Hungary and I'm 17 years old. Yes, so let's take a look at We Are Dungeon. Um, we play the trailer, so you get a small idea of your dungeon. Yeah, that was We Are Dungeon. Um, we Are Dungeon is simply a game where two players play. One is in VR and the other player plays with a smartphone game. It concentrates on the communication between the players and yeah, the people have to communicate well together that the game makes fun and so they get a reward in the end. First of all, I am going to explain you how we met. So. Last year I won the Game Award at Bomb Play. Um, Michael already explained to you what Bomb Play is. It's a youth competition for people in the age of 8 to 20, which can do games, code, robotic and multimedia. They focus on the interaction between these things. And there I won the Game Award and they invited me to the Ars Electronica Festival. Uh, this is in Linz, Austria. I um, went there and there I met John. We had that opportunity to work with a HTC Vive. A HTC Vive is a very expensive but great VR headset. You can walk in the room and you have controllers which you can use like hands. And there we started creating VR Dungeon. Um, then, yeah, John is going to talk about the design of VR Dungeon. Okay, so first of all, uh, we had to decide what type of game we wanted to make. And we decided that we should make a puzzle game, because VR is not mainstream yet. Many people did not try VR before playing with VR Dungeon. So we wanted to make the experience as smooth as possible. And puzzle games are really accessible, because they don't involve quick movements, and they are not disorienting. They are relaxed and fun, and they are family friendly. Next up, we thought that it would be cool if we would have some kind of a multiplayer in VR because many people think that, uh, that VR is antisocial. Like when I first showed the, the HTC Vive to my mother, she told me that I am going to be totally antisocial in that headset. But I wanted to prove to her and everyone else that VR can be social. So we thought of a game mechanic that requires two people, one in VR and one with a separate mobile application, and they have to work together and communicate to solve puzzles in virtual reality. This, this game can also use this virtual, virtual reality as an alternate space space. So I like calling the game cross reality because you use the real reality and the virtual reality at the same time. Um, the game also requires um, environmental awareness because there are multiple room types. So there are rooms that are really old and have uh, spider webs. There are rooms where the signs are written with red. So you can't memorize a single set of numbers. You have to depend on your teammates to help each other complete the puzzles. And we needed to reward returning players. So we thought that we should randomly generate the puzzles each time. And so we did it. Um, each each uh, room is generated at runtime. And we also have a set of treasures, so if you complete six puzzles, then you get the treasure. And, if, and you have to collect all treasures to complete the game. And this is rewarding uh, returning players, and another incentive to try the game with different people all over again. So, yes, this was the basic idea of VR Dungeon. Now we're going to be going more into the details. So, I'm going to first talk about VR Dungeon Art. Uh, we wanted to create a mysterious dog dungeon 
but it has we want we don't want this comic look, so we focused on simple but realistic 3D model. This sounds stupid, but yeah, I think we got a quite good result. And um, our models had a low GP usage, so you can play it even with no high-end graphic card. And yeah, go on. So for creating these 3D models, we talk Blender. Blender is a great 3D creation suite. Uh, it's open source, so there are many cool 3D plug, 3D part plug plugins, and you have a great workflow between Unity, which John later is going to talk something about. Yes, Blender we created all our 3D models. So the 3D models, uh, our assets, we created them by ourselves. And here you see a small example of the treasure which you can get in the end of the game. Like this is how it looks as a 3D model. And then afterwards in the game, in game, it looks quite nice. And as textures, we use Creative Commons texture. Creative Commons textures are very nice, they are open. Uh, you can use them for everything you want. You have to look at the, whether the Creative Commons, there are different Creative Commons rights, but we used um, textures which are nice to, which you can use. So, we're going to the sound. Um, we made our sounds, everything by ourselves. We used Audacity, Audacity is a free program, we tweaked them in there, and we recorded them with our microphones at home. So, John is going to talk about VR programming. Okay, so we use the Unity engine as a framework for our game uh, for multiple reasons. So first, we both had prior experiences with Unity and in the Arts Electronic Festival, we really didn't have a lot of time, so we needed to make a gameplay prototype quickly and Unity allowed us to do exactly that. We could also quickly implement new gameplay mechanics and test them because with Unity, you can play test at any time in while creating the game, so it's a really good workflow for me. And and we also use the lab renderer by Valve. So Valve is the company who basically researched the HTC Vive's tracking technology and they rewrote a significant part of the Unity engine to make it, uh, like, to make it better for VR. So the, it's, it renders objects differently so that the GPU doesn't need to do as much work. Uh, the script language we used is C-sharp, because we knew C-sharp before, and we tried to make everything as modular and as reusable as possible. So all of the rooms use the same random generation algorithm, so this way the file size is smaller and everything is more logical. So here is the quick diagram of the random generation. So we first generate the solution and then generate the good numbers, so the solution numbers, and then we add random bad numbers. And we also integrated Steam into our game. Uh, the Steamworks API can be used in C Sharp, so we didn't need any special wrapper or anything. And we use achievements and stuff like that in Steam. So if the player gets a treasure, he also gets an achievement in Steam. So um, our additional work, um, we created the app, but uh, well, there's some more work to do. Um, first of all, we wanted to release the game on Steam. So we had to create a Steam page. Uh, we, when you want to release a game, we are game of Steam. You have to contact Valve directly. You don't have to go through the process of Steam Greenlight. So this was a great opportunity to get our game released instantly on Steam. So we had to connect, contact them instantly, directly. And yeah, after they accepted our game, we create a store, pa store page and images descriptions. Yeah, what you see in the store page. And right now you can buy the game on Steam for five francs. But currently we are in early access, so there are some bugs, but we will give you more updates soon. Okay, yes. about the website. Um, we wanted to build a website that contains all of the information and looks quite nice. So we used the template by HTML5 up and we modified the CSS and the HTML to make it look better and suit our needs more. And we also needed to make a contact form so that players can easily contact us. It's a simple PHP script that uh, gives, gives, so sends us emails every time someone tries to contact us. So I think that's pretty good. And we can communicate our, with our players directly via this contact page. We also use Code Anywhere. Code Anywhere is a program that allows you to edit your files from any PC. 
just have to log in and I can edit the files on the server so I can update the page from basically anywhere. And the last thing we need to do is a mobile companion app because the second player can either use a printed PDF or he can use his Android phone to browse the app. And the app was written in Android Studio uh, to ensure the biggest performance. And yeah, we could have used some other framework or something, but Android Studio was really good because the application is simple. We needed it to be small size, so, so it needed to be small in size and needed to run fast in every device. So it's compat compatible back to Jelly Bean and it doesn't require fast hardware. So these are the references, like the logos. And yeah, this was our um, travel to the game We Are Dungeon. If you want to play it, you can go behind into this room. We had a um, wild life and you can play it together with your friend or I will play it with you. So, um, are there any questions? Okay, in this case, thank you for your attention. Yes. So, uh, if, if, if you are a programmer in here and you're not already feeling bad about being uh, not as advanced as these two were at their age, then maybe now is the time to start thinking about what you did when you were 15 and 17, right? Mobile apps, Steam release, uh, game development, that's, that's amazing. So, uh, thanks a lot for telling us about your project. Um, I have one question, what will you do next? Like, we will release the final game on Steam, like, we plan on releasing the final version this summer. We will add more types of puzzle and more content and more treasures. So we basically want to expand the core concept of the game even more, because we didn't have too much time to, to you know, write the game and we just wanted to get it out in early access to get feedback. Okay, alright, so thanks a lot. Thanks for being here. The game can be played in the room uh, beyond the beyond the screen which is literally two two rooms beyond this this screen so thanks a lot thanks for being here